Hello everyone, today we do have a video here covering Lenny. We have Amir with us today. How you doing, Amir? Uh, I'm doing really well, because uh, we get to watch One Circle today, who is, I think, for NA, he is our faker. One Circle has, uh, has done a lot of very fun plays, playing some very skilled characters, things that people didn't expect to be good, picking up the... Della that he was really known for before um, being able to look for combos that people didn't realize were possible. I think One Circle was the one that really brought the uh, insect combo for Adela into into the limelight. Definitely a player that is well known for a lot of their incredible plays and we're actually going to be seeing the Lenny today which I'm kind of excited for. Uh, you know, for a player like this to see what they do on Lenny to kind of carry, because they've been playing a lot of Lenny lately, I think like with a 31% win rate, which is kind of incredible uh, at the time of this video was, I think, over 70 games on, on the character. So, you know, I, I'm expecting a lot of really good utilization of the Spring Launcher to send enemies into the team, uh, good like stuns and ways to just really enable the team to kind of win the fights. Yeah, and I think my biggest thing about One Circle's Lenny is that it's not even like he's... This was one of the characters that he was playing early season. He has a 31% win rate with playing this. I think started playing like halfway through the season. So this has been what he's been playing in high elo lobbies. So he, he just... He wasn't stomping the, uh, the early lobbies as... He is one of the, I think, greatest players that we see currently. As he's been rank 1 multiple times during multiple seasons. And, uh, yeah, being able to see the rank one player, someone that usually carries their lobbies, and even for his team, uh, he plays a bit professional, or he plays a lot professionally, actually. Um, for his team, I think he's usually locking in the carries, playing the Celine, the Carla, the Theodore, um, and getting to see him play support in solo queue feels, uh, feels like a treat. Yeah, it's actually uh, very interesting to, to think about, especially because, like, when we think about supports in in Eternal Return, you know, we have a handful of them, Lenny being one of them. We've got also Charlotte. We've got Johan. We have some other support-ish kind of characters like Priya. But, like, the the, 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 pre, like the core supports, you know, of the are like usually the three healers, like Lenny, Charlotte, Johan. Uh, I feel like Lenny really stands out the most as uh, a very carry-oriented support. Yeah, so with the other two being Johan and Charlotte, they, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, as most people say, uh, you take your hands off the keyboard and, and they still do their job. With Lenny, I think you have to do a lot more playmaking on your own as you have really good CC tools to bring opponents from their comfort zones into your team's comfort zone. So being able to make sure that you're able to use this uh, this ult and your shields and all of your different utility, um, especially knowing when to be throwing it at your opponents versus when to be throwing it at your team, is uh, is what makes the difference between a good money player and one circle, a rank one money player. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, well, I'm excited to see where this comes into gameplay wise. But I think one of the big factors too to look about when we think about Charlotte and Johannes supports is. I think a lot of their game plan is to help mask and cover up your team's mistakes to allow them to play not necessarily worse, but if they do play worse, that you're kind of recovering them from those bad plays to in turn turn the fight and win. Whereas Lenny can still do that because she has healing, she has shielding, but she can also do the extra step of set up the plays for the team, give them that free that free kill. And like you mentioned, you know, bring them into that comfort zone, right? Leon wants to dive an instant full comp with someone. Well, Lenny can just bring them into the dive range and then instant kill them. Yeah, it allows players uh, that usually play things that are like a lot more fast paced or higher tempo, um, like the playmaker to, uh, to lock in a supportive role and then still do their same job. Maybe with a bit less damage and a bit less flashy, but it means that someone like One Circle can still be locking in Lenny and carrying these games. For sure. And hey, hey, Lenny can still be flashy, okay? I guarantee we're going to see one <laughs> crazy play today. As we yeah, actually I want to see at least one 1v1. 
Okay, if we get a Lenny 1v1, I am stoked for this game. <laughs> yeah, we will be seeing the Kathy TP in. I don't know if we'll be able to see him 1v1, or as I think Kathy is Omega scared of one circle Lenny, as I would be as well. We do see the dash over though. I don't think Kathy will be able to go for the one shot, sadly. But yeah, like just pressuring the Kathy into our team, knowing that we have the Leon under us on the left side, and I think it was the Demma coming around from the right side, pushing him, pushing the Kathy into one of them, and then buying time for the other one to make their way around. Never really full engaging with our W, but staying within a reasonable range. No, for sure. And I mean, again, I think you can play really, really aggressive there without too much care in the world. Because even if Lenny falls there at that point, no matter what, the Kathy gets the cured kill. And that's what that's what matters. And our, our first item pickup is actually going to be Elf Dress. I think this is the most common Lenny item that you're ever going to see is Elf Dress. It is the one of the best support item builds you can get. It just empowers your two teammates. And that's what uh, Lenny already loves to do. Yeah, and... I know early on, I think this season and during last season, Elf Dress was somewhat of a controversial item, as we do actually see One Circle going forward, the demo are just to get closer, we're gonna, uh, let's be real, we kind of missed everything. <laughs> yeah. Everyone on our team missed a lot of abilities, and we might actually see the one shot, but we can't, because Lenny's healing and shielding is just too much, but yeah, that healing dodging one. everything that we're doing as well makes it a bit hard. But yeah, I mean, that Kathy should have full comboed us, but the healing wind just brought us back up into a healthy state that it just did not matter. Yeah, especially because we are also running the... Uh, sorry, the... What is it? The augment called? The healing factor. Um, we're running the healing factor, which means that not only are we a lot more offensive because we get the attack power, but we also are more defense because we increase our healing and shielding power. So... One circle being able to output a bit more healing and shielding than I think Kathy was ready for, denying her the ability to one-shot our team. It's a, a really nice change of events. No, absolutely. And actually, one thing that I really like about this too, and this doesn't come up a whole lot in discussions, but I think it's really important to talk about is map control and like zone controls. If we've noticed, we have not gone further than four zones so far in this game. We have been in the school, gas station alley, and archery. That has essentially been all that we've ever been in this game so far. And it really just kind of shows that once you have like a control of like three, four zones, and if they don't go into reds, you can just rotate around them and the farm is just naturally always up. And they always guarantee the control. This is like the first time now on night two that they're going to be leaving this because there's still an objective up down into hotel. Yeah, I know at least with the uh, the big change they made to farming recently, all the animal zone, uh, oh, yeah, sorry, all the animal spot changes, it made it so that I think there's more farm on the map in general, meaning that we can kind of cycle specific zones out like consistently. We can go archery school. Um, what is it? They went gas station. And alley. alley right after. Yeah, and then I'm back so, through gas station archery again. Yeah, we're able to just keep cycling zones like this because we have more bears, we have more wolves, more chickens, just more things all over the map. And then now that we have uh, finally found a reason to leave our four zone cycle, as I think if school wasn't out, they might have actually continued it. Yeah, if um, I think I think for sure if if school wasn't a BZ zone. And that mithril wasn't up for way longer than it absolutely should have been. I genuinely think they would have passed into school. They would have gotten another bear. They would have had their rest of their farm. Cause, and they would have known the timers in the farm because they had cleared it before. So they'd have that secured control. And at that point, they would go probably pass towards the next free objective that they could get to. Yeah, it's very nice to see also we're getting tax skill three because boxes can just drop our tax skill upgrade for us. And yeah, we might just do the same thing farming between hotel up to uh, up to alley now because we're gonna get all of us beach bears. All oh yeah, all the beach bears here. Beach is gonna close. We're gonna go hotel. I think some hotel farm should be coming back up, and then our archery farm should be coming back up. But sadly, it looks like there is a team that will be contesting us. And this Kathy yet again. We these these guys are just they're our nemesis in these game this game. 
For sure. And actually, we almost caught the Alex on that spring launcher into the wall, but it just was a second too early. Yeah, unlucky for that one. But we do see that one circle is going to keep throwing the shields over to our team, uh, making sure that we can get the stun off the Leon R onto the Kathy. See, the difference between a regular Lenny and a great Lenny is noticing that you can look for the shield onto your team in a situation where there was no need to actually stun our opponents. Stunning our opponents doesn't net us any real benefit. Just make sure that your team isn't taking more damage from the auto attacks that are coming out. And then once you're able to stun our opponents off of our teammate CC, make sure that your teammate can follow up with it. Make sure they have more buttons ready to press. And one circle actually positioning really far forward, able to survive. We're, we're just doing so much because for a lot of people, what they don't realize is the role of a support is more than just buffing your team, but staying alive is so important. Because if we're able to basically force our opponents to to be looking at us for like five seconds of the fight, then they're not looking at our teammate for those five seconds. Exactly. And it means that they can do so much more. Yeah, and also another thing too with this here is that uh, one thing you can really notice with the spring launcher that, that One Circle is doing as well is a lot of times outside of that one catch on the yuki he's always trying to aim at the wall he's always trying to send them into the wall because one it keeps them in the same kind of position that his team can predictably be able to hit the targets with but it also and it also like knocks them in the air which is basically a free stun so he's just guaranteeing a stun and keeping them stunned in place versus trying to send them like further away or too close and then causing a distance issue for him to be able to kite or chase with the other aspect too, I just want to go and shift a little bit of topic into the items as well. I mean, we have Healing Wind, which is massive on the module enhancement for the defense increase. We obviously have Elf Dress, but now we're running Dragon's Fury. Lenin, Lenny's really, really good at applying this because they have a lot of spammable abilities and they can hit a lot off really quickly to enhance the damage of the team. Yeah, and another really nice thing as we do actually see the Lenny just basically sustaining our Leon through infinite infinite amounts of damage. Like, I don't know how how, how was Leon still alive there. He lived so much longer than he should have, being able to take the Magnus Spike, the, I'm pretty sure Fiora full alt combo, and the Yawn full combo as well. But because we have the bonus defense, um, our attack skill 3 on Lenny, and we also have so much healing and shielding coming through, we're just still we're still running around and we were like half health after those combos came through. Yep. And then but... also just being able to just CC and just drop the enemy team to help really give a little bit of breathing room in between the damages. Like, like yeah. exactly again, sending them into the walls just to guarantee that they're just knocked up, unable to move without having to like over like disrupt your teammates game plan. And we actually saw there, I mean, we had Lenny actually buy for the Debbie Marlene. I believe it was for the, the radar, the Elysian Halo. I'm actually surprised we're seeing the radar from the Debbie and Marlene. I feel like it's not a, it's not an item we see demo build very often, but I assume that because we are playing with the support, we have a bit lower damage than we're on than we're used to. Also, we're just looking at one circle, look for the alt back onto the heart to try and pull her into the team. Sadly, the heart was able to blink out of it in time, but the idea is what matters because. That is something that really good Lenny should be looking for. Also realizing we have the damage to go and kill the Cecilia on our own. Just going for the one for one trade as that is pretty important. Trading a DPS for our support. No, for sure. I mean, really, really good. Um, this should be, yeah, and that turnaround would have went excellent there. I mean, the heart had great reaction. He was able to dodge it. But I mean, if that was a catch, that would have absolutely been the turnaround that they were looking for into a full Lenny combo, which then with Dragon's Fury shreds the defense into the teammates coming through. Uh, going back to the Debbie Marlene, I think the radar picking up is because they're afraid they don't have enough damage with Eleni on the team. Yeah, I assume that it's for the bonus damage. It also is a bit of extra sustain because radar does give you a bit of healing from the bonus damage it deals. Um, but on the topic of items, I was going to say the pulverization from uh, Dragon's Fury on Lenny is also a bit better because um, we do get to see... Sorry... <laughs> Lenny, uh, Lenny's passive deals a bit of skill amp damage, and it comes from her technically, which means that the damage, or the effects from pulverization, do trigger off of Lenny hitting her teammates and then her teammates hitting an opponent. 
which is something that does go unnoticed for a lot of people. Right. Yeah, that's actually another really important factor. And can we just talk about on that fight? I mean, catching that Alex is just crazy there. Like, runs so far ahead, catches the Alex, stuns him, basically just like, again, says, hey, team, you guys can come up whenever you want. It's, it's just a free kill. Also, something small I forgot about Lenny myself until I just saw one circle do it is that Lenny has this very niche and small interaction where all of her abilities are affected off of allies and it it just cares about allies but technically cameras are counted as allies and Lenny can use abilities such as her W and E on cameras to gain the bonuses so in that fight we actually saw one circle just used W and a camera right into a right where his W was landing. And he got the bonus movement speed from that to be able to de-skill forward as well to catch the Alex. It's a very niche mechanic that most people just don't use because it's not too important. But when you see it used, it it just makes you think that this character is completely different and has so much more potential. Absolutely. I didn't even know that mechanic. That's actually a really cool interaction. And I think also we do have the Devil's Marksman coming up with the 15% and we actually swapped the Blade Boots getting off the uh, the ten uh, the Tenacity Boots, or Tekion Brace for the cooldown. Yeah, because we do still have our 15% cooldown from our weapon and we have 15% coming from our headpiece. So we don't need any more CDR and switching over to some heal cut boots. Lenny applies heal cut very well, but... I mean, at this point, it wouldn't matter because both of our teammates have red shoes, so they should be apply applying all the heal cut that we need. For sure. And I mean, I mean, at this point, though, I think the team is really just kind of deciding who, who gets what. I think they have a ton of items, and actually, they just made blood, bloody hand as well. Yeah, which, in my opinion, is a very underrated item. It gives, like, it gives a lot of really good stats, and I understand that permafrost is a well-statted item for pretty cheap, but if you are able to make it all the way up to that bloody hand, I feel like you end up pumping a lot more damage, and it's nice to see, especially on a comp where you are lacking a bit of damage because you are running the support, it's nice to see a bit more of a damage option coming out from the Leon. Oh, for sure. Yeah, exactly. I think that's also the very important thing with these teams. They're kind of making sure that they don't lack damage for the fact that, yeah, I mean, one circle is doing a ton of damage for a Lenny, but it is definitely less than, you know, if they had a third damage dealer. This will be actually interesting. I don't know if they're going to take the fight early. I hope they don't. But like, I would be really interested to see how they win the fight against the Wick line team. But they're they're knowing just to wait and stall it out. Play it smart. Just wait out the Wick. They have no reason to take the fight yet. Last two teams. But it would be a highlight if you could just say, you know what, they had Wickline and we still took them down. Yeah, but it also would be a pretty low moment, <clears throat> sorry, if you uh, end up fighting Wick team and sadly you just barely lose. Yeah, that, it, <laughs> that would be unfortunate. Yeah, I think at least with this last fight, we haven't seen these two teams clash yet. So I'm very, like, I'm looking forward to see what One Circle does in terms of who he decides to target the alt with. Does he decide to deny the Yawn, the Engage, or will he be looking to force Nathapon to be in our team's range? Because Nathapon being a low mobility mage, only usually having the blink to actually get out of any ability will be, it'll be somewhat surprising to see if he'll be using this, uh, this alt to try and force our our opponents into us or, or force our opponents away from us for sure i mean i think this i think the best play here is absolutely try and catch the nathapon here bring him to the team and watch nathapon instantly blow up but we'll we'll see i think it's gonna be a more offensive a catch not a defensive one. Oh, and we actually will be dodging the nathapon our nath going for something pretty risky and yeah we're walking forward use the d skill just try and toss the r doesn't connect and now we're just trying to sustain our team even, didn't even realize Wick just went down not too long ago. And yeah, we just jump over to our Debbie and Marlene, get the double stun as our Debbie and Marlene's healing up a bit. And she did pop False Oath earlier. And 
Things like that. Small things where we're able to stun two people off of our teammate using some sort of CC. Making sure that we chain this properly. Not just layer a lot of CC on top of each other, but time it. Make sure it's one, then the next, and then the next. Being able to see him actually wait for the Debbie and Marlene knockup is... It's just so nice. For sure. And I mean, that was a great uh, decision there. You tried to try to catch the Nathapon, didn't get the Nathapon, immediately saw the 2v1 happening onto the, uh, onto, I believe, our, our Leon and saved him from a terrible fight with a massive heal from the Healing Wind and Shield into a great turnaround for their team. And I mean, that is a prime example of how you can be supportive while also carrying your team on a character such as Lenny. And uh, we'll see you all in the next one.